All right, you guys, so we're here. We're going to talk about Skull Island Rise of Kong. And this one, it's kind of interesting because I found this article talking about um, the studio behind it. And Skull Island Rise of Kong developers speak out against bad reviews. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about this today. Don't forget, you guys, like, comment, subscribe. Every little bit helps this channel. We're going to get into this. The developers behind Skull Island Rise of Kong provide some intriguing and interesting insight into a game panned as one of the worst of 2023. Um, yeah, let's keep going. <laughs> Skull Island Rise of Kong was developed in just one year, which contributes to its poor quality and negative reception. The game's tight budget and limited uh, information provided by the publisher hindered the team's ability to produce a high-quality game. You don't say. Uh, Iguana B, the developer of Skull Island, Rise of Kong, has created good games, but the negative feedback on this release may harm their reputation and future funding for opportunities. I I hate how this sentence is like worded. They they ha has created has created good games, but doesn't give you a name. Right. Anyways, the team behind the recently launched and widely panned Skull Island Rise of Kong, Kong has spoken out about the game's bad reception, revealing that it was only developed, I mean, it was only in development for a year. Um, released on October 17th uh, on a quest to avenge the death of his parents, he sets out across the uh, island growing from a young orphan to a mature, powerful ape. So, like, reading that sentence right there makes this game sound really dope. Like, you, you're going through the life cycle of Kong, right? Before Skull Island Rise of Kong even officially uh, released, images and clips of the game began to appear on social media, which is how I heard about this game, right? None of the accompanying captions were favorable, with the majority mocking it, uh, mocking or expressing disbelief at the state of the game. And the sh In short, it looks like a PlayStation 2 release, which it does. It looks terrible. I don't... I mean, I get why it was released, because... Real quick... When it comes to licensed games and licensed properties, um, companies will go out and they'll purchase said licensing rights to games, to movies, right? And the license holder will be like, okay, listen, you have, you know, let's say three years to do something with it. If I don't see a script, if I don't hear any kind of movement, then I'm going to pull it back. So I'm not sure, I believe, it's kind of ironic, the, the, the company that was behind this that, you know, released it is called Game Mill. Um, we'll talk about Game here, Game Mill here in a little bit. Um, Lord knows how long Game Mill sat on, you know, the, the license for this Kong game before they were like, um, you know, Iguana B or whatever the hell the name of this company is, yeah, Iguana B. Um, before they went to him and was like, Hey, we need you to make a Kong game. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, because like, I know like perfect example was the fantastic four movie back in the nineties. If you guys didn't know, there was a fantastic four movie that was actually never released. Right. And it was all because the license holder for the game, for the fantastic four movies was told by the actual owners of the rights of the property you need to come up with something or you're going to lose the rights so they went and they created this terrible terrible b-rated movie just so they can maintain those rights with zero intention of releasing said movie now don't get me wrong you can go out there you can find the 1990s fantastic four movie and all of its terrible glory but anyways that's enough of that we're getting back into this um some of the game's developers at Iguana B in uh, Chile spoke with The Verge and revealed that the game was only in development for a year, which essentially doomed it from the start. In other words, Skull Island Rise of Kong fell victim to a development cycle. Um, I mean, yeah, you fell victim to a development cycle, homie, but at the same token, you, you didn't have to agree to take the game. Um, often afflicted by licensed game, a tight turnaround and an even tighter budget. Members of the Iguana B team who spoke anonymously, anonymously for fear of repercussions from the publisher. Um, I, bro, I, I guarantee you, the publisher probably read this and knew exactly who said it because I I never heard of Iguana B until uh, reading 
through and trying to figure out like what, what happened with this game it's probably like a 20 like probably less than 20 man team trying to put this game together right and yeah you started june of 2022 crunch time kicked in around february of 2023 where development expected to be complete with june of 2023 so you guys started June of 2022. Crunch time started June, tw- I mean February 2023, with the completion date of J- June 2023. Bro, there's no way in hell. Let's take a look. This is some of the uh, footage from the Kong game. Oh yeah, like it's terrible. This is god awful. Like I don't see how. Like I mean, granted, you have a year, but like. I don't see how the people that hold the license are like, yeah, we're putting that shit out, bro. I got the hiccups. Excuse me. Skull Island was published by an aptly named company, Game Mill, which apparently regularly regularly contracts small indie developers to crank out games quickly. It was inevitably a compromise the quality for um, even from workers who might otherwise produce good work. Um, like I said, you don't have to accept the contract. And if you're not happy, you can just be like, hey, this is what we got. You guys go find somebody else um, who didn't uh, help with the Skull Island, but had experience with other game mill titles. They that the team very often didn't receive the information necessary to do their job well. That's where, bro, you just, hey, you're doing a con game. Like there's really, there's really not much that you have to like really put thought into because you know you're you, just the overview going from you know the baby ape to apex predator basically to avenge your fa- you know your family's death it, it just there there's no real like <laughs> there's no real depth in that story I'm just saying um, the tight budget of course further impacted the stressful uh, completion of the project game mill would simply not provide enough money to retain experienced staff. And another Iguana Bee developer recounted the story of a colleague who was laid off despite having been on the team uh, longer. Deep down, I knew it was because the publisher didn't provide them with enough funding to maintain a certain number of people for an extended period. And see, that's the terrible part is like when um, you look into game developers or even CGI makers for movie studios they don't get paid that much, right? And that's why a lot of like indie developers and CGI studios in the movie industry go under once they're complete with the project because they had enough to fund said project, but not enough to keep the doors open, to keep the lights on. And I'm not I'm not saying that that, you know, they need depending on the work, you need to get paid more if you do a really good job. Now I think what sucks for Iguana B is you're probably released one of the worst games of all times. And on top of that, the memes are going crazy about it. Like there's going to be no recovery for this because like right here, this is, this is where I was getting into with the first like paragraph talking about, they make great games. Uh, Iguana B is capable of producing good games in March, 2022. The studio collaborated with uh, developer studio Voyager and publish untold tales to create what lies in the multiverse, an award-winning puzzle platformer that currently has a very positive rating on Steam. What's unfortunate is the product like Skull Island <laughs> will have a negative repercussions on the reputation of Iguana B, which will therefore be less likely to receive funding for games it wants to make. Instead, the developer will have to keep <laughs> accepting contracts from game mills and other publishers that will, will only want licensed games, which is true. You kind of backed yourself into the corner with that. And like, truth be told, I've never heard of this game, What Lies in the Multiverse. So I had to Google it. And it, it does have a very positive review, 9 out of 10 on Steam. But like I said, I have never heard of this game. And when they were talking about the steam reviews of skull Island, I was like, I got to check these out. So this right here is the reviews on skull Island. It won't let me zoom in product was refunded. <laughs> things were things wrong with this game, bad combat, bad visuals, opening the game causes my GPU to crash, poor level design, boring bosses, 
Things going good with the game. Hmm. Monkey. <laughs> Another one. Iguana B games more like Iguana B rid of this game from my Steam library. He didn't get a refund. Um for the most part, there's a lot of people like this one was a it's a meme. I will never be as brave as the people who thought this acceptable enough to release Jigsaw product review I mean, refund product refund and of course here are the memes that people are like yeah there is a jerk off machine in this game Harambe died for this this is a monkey souls like um I mean I feel bad for little companies and don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with turning down games but at the same token it sucks if you got to accept said game to keep the doors open but if you, you got to do it and you see that there's zero communication and that you're unable to get any information from, you know, the people that are paying you, then turn it down. There's no reason to accept it and push out something that is a PS2 era type of game and then be like, man, I'm shocked that they pushed it out. It's really going to hurt our reputation. But people make videos like this talking about it. And like I said, I'm not sure what their, their situation is. But like I said, the second they, you know, that Game Mills is not, you know, responding, not giving you direction or anything, just give it up. And it will save you all this heartache. Until next time, you guys, y'all take it easy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.